At long last, the so-called Starship Explosion curse appears to be broken. With the recent successful test flight, the Starship program is finally back on track. So today, let's take a look at what SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell has said about the future of Starship, particularly in relation to the mission that has captured global attention, returning humans to the moon. More than 50 years ago, in an extraordinary national endeavor, we sent astronauts to the moon for short visits. Now it's time to focus on putting hundreds and eventually thousands of people on the lunar surface to live and work. Starting with Artemis III, Starship will truly change the game. This is a race not to repeat what has been done, but to do much more. Don't bet against American innovation. SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell proudly said this following Starship's 10th flight. After months of failed attempts, Starship, the biggest and heaviest rocket ever built, has finally nailed a successful flight, reigniting U.S. hopes of beating China in the race back to the moon. Both stages of the SpaceX rocket splashed down nearly intact, marking a major milestone for the vehicle NASA is depending on for its first crewed lunar return since Apollo. NASA Acting Administrator Sean Duffy took to social media after Flight 10's success, writing, This paves the way for the Starship human landing system that will bring American astronauts back to the moon on Artemis III. He added, This is a great day for NASA and our commercial space partners. Not long after, SpaceX's president also shared an interview clip where Duffy doubled down. In 2027, we will return American astronauts to the moon. We won yesterday's space race, we'll win today's space race against China, and we'll always win tomorrow's space race. Our hope is still, uh, 2027? You think that's realistic? I do. Not long ago, after attending a Crew-11 launch attempt at Kennedy Space Center, Duffy spoke to a group of social media influencers attending as special guests. Duffy shared that he had recently met with SpaceX executives about the Aramis 3 mission timeline and came away reassured. They feel very comfortable on Starship, they feel like they're on pace for the lander, he said. They told me if there's a holdup for Artemis 3, it's not going to be them. It's clear that SpaceX remains confident in the progress of its Starship program, and with good reason. The most recent test flight marked a significant milestone, the end of a series of three test missions that had fallen short of major objectives and in some cases resulted in the destruction of hardware during ground testing. The latest mission was a noticeable step forward. The Super Heavy Booster executed a controlled return to a designated area off the coast, testing an alternate engine configuration for its landing burn. It hovered just above the water before splashing down. Meanwhile, Starship completed several key in-flight objectives. It opened its payload bay door and deployed eight Starlink mass simulators using a PEZ dispenser-style mechanism. Its re-entry was on target, and onboard cameras captured the final maneuver as the vehicle gently settled into the ocean. The flight wasn't perfect. One of the Super Heavy's 33 Raptor engines shut down during ascent, and early in re-entry, part of the Starship's aft skirt appeared to break apart. One of its flaps also showed visible damage. However, neither issue seemed to affect re-entry or the final landing sequence. Still, the successful test helps to silence some critics of Elon Musk and SpaceX, who have suggested that Starship suffers from fundamental engineering flaws. The conversation is now shifting. The question isn't whether Starship can avoid exploding, it's whether its development timeline can. In that sense, Starship may be back on track, but it's still behind schedule. The string of earlier failures has set the program back significantly, putting it behind the aggressive internal milestones SpaceX had hoped to meet, not just for NASA's Aramis program, but also for the company's own ambitions, such as launching the next generation of Starlink satellites. SpaceX had originally hoped to complete many of the objectives of the most recent flight earlier this year. Realistically, the program is now at least six months behind its original target. That said, if SpaceX can pull off another test flight within the next six weeks and see another round of success, they may be able to regain momentum. But not everyone is so optimistic. 
Some analysts called the 2027 target for an Artemis III lunar landing ambitious, up to over-optimistic. While SpaceX has repeatedly proven its ability to solve complex technical challenges, the scale and number of remaining hurdles are unlike anything the company has tackled before. NASA, in its original selection statement for the Human Landing System HLS contract, identified a significant weakness in SpaceX's proposal due to its complicated concept of operations. That complexity includes an unprecedented launch cadence and synchronized operations to enable in-space refueling, something that's never been attempted before. Without in-orbit refueling, Starship can only reach low Earth orbit, to travel to more distant destinations like the Moon or Mars, its tanks must first be refilled with liquid oxygen and liquid methane, delivered via multiple additional Starship launches. As a result, SpaceX must also prove it can launch and operate multiple Starships in rapid succession, a capability that has never been demonstrated at this scale. NASA projected that between 6 and 10 cryogenic propellant transfers would be needed to fill Starship's tanks for a Moon mission. But with each step forward, the challenges have proven even more intricate. In April 2024, following the third Starship-S Super Heavy flight, which included a limited cryogenic propellant transfer from one tank to another within Starship, NASA officials said they expected the first ship-to-ship -ship transfer to occur sometime in 2025. This demonstration will require placing one Starship in orbit and launching another to dock with it for the actual refueling process, an essential precursor to sending a lunar lander version of Starship to the Moon. However, the recent delays make it highly unlikely that this milestone will be achieved in 2025. Speaking at the July 25th meeting of the Space Studies Board, Lori Glaze, NASA's Associate Administrator for Exploration Systems Development, acknowledged the slippage. The key milestone that we are watching for, and everyone is watching for, is when they will be able to demonstrate cryogenic propulsion transfer. We were anticipating that it would be completed by this year. Clearly that is slipping, but we are anxiously watching for their next launch to see how they're making progress toward achieving that particular milestone. She didn't provide an updated timeline, but underscored that this demonstration is crucial for future steps, particularly an uncrewed lunar landing test, where Starship would need to touch down on the moon and then take off again. To make that possible, SpaceX will have to launch potentially 15 to 20 tanker flights to fill the lander tanks with liquid oxygen and methane, though neither NASA nor SpaceX has confirmed updated figures. Of course, according to Elon Musk's earlier estimates, the number of required tanker launches is significantly lower. But the truth is, no one knows for sure, as this technique has never been attempted before. We still don't know the exact timeline for the required launches, neither NASA nor SpaceX has provided one. But what is clear is that the pace of operations needed to support Artemis III would be nothing short of historic. In fact, it appears to demand a faster operational tempo than even Falcon 9, SpaceX's far smaller and much more mature rocket, has achieved after more than a decade of regular flights. Even once all the tanker flights and orbital logistics are complete, it remains unproven whether the fully-fueled Starship can be human-rated, land safely on the lunar surface, and return astronauts to the Orion spacecraft for their journey back to Earth. That's why before Artemis III can launch, Starship must demonstrate that its Starship human landing system can both land on the moon and lift off again. Initially, NASA's contract with SpaceX only required an uncrewed lunar landing. However, that requirement has since been revised. The updated mandate now includes a launch from the Moon's surface as part of the uncrewed demo. This shift likely reflects both the urgency of the Aramis timeline and a desire to reduce mission risk ahead of the first crewed landing attempt. When asked whether this additional liftoff requirement increased the value of the contract, NASA clarified that the change is part of its broader preparations for Artemis III, which aims to return astronauts to the lunar surface for exploration and science. Under the revised terms, SpaceX must now complete an uncrewed demonstration mission in which Starship HLS lands on the moon, operates on the surface for a minimum of two hours, and transmits data back to Earth. Then, critically, it must relight its Raptor engines and launch back off the lunar surface. 
NASA officially amended the Human Landing System Appendix H contract in December 2023 to include this additional milestone. Notably, this requirement does not come with additional funding. Also, for this uncrewed test, Starship HLS is not required to reach lunar orbit. Simply demonstrating a successful lunar liftoff is sufficient to meet the updated criteria. Meeting all the necessary milestones to support a 2027 Artemis III mission is beginning to look like a tall order. At the recent Space Studies Board meeting, NASA's Lori Glaze presented a chart outlining the key milestones leading up to Artemis III, including critical Starship testing. However, the chart notably lacked any dates. When asked for a specific schedule, Glaze said NASA had a more detailed timeline that could be shared with the committee. If such a document was provided, it has not been made public. Meanwhile, China has laid out